Hello, everyone. I think we are live. I'll wait and make sure we've got the audio working. I did not properly set up my anything. I didn't realize. I thought everything was ready to go. And then last minute forgot that everything was messed up from working on the studio. So none of the cameras were in the right place. I'm running late. I guarantee I'm forgetting stuff. Okay, audio's good. Yay. Okay. Um, let's stop that. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, there was no live stream last week. I was sick. And tonight I've got allergies, so I'll be sneezing my way through this. That'll be fun. So the first thing that I need to do before I get started, we're going to be working in acrylics tonight. I'm going to be painting a koi fish. And if we come over here to the palette, you'll see how I clean this off. It's just a razor blade, a glass scraper, and I am just going to scrape up. Actually, this is a really, this razor blade or glass scraper is actually covered in paint, but it still works pretty good, huh? But that's why it's not coming off very clean here. Let's get all of this going. So I'm just scraping up old paint. And the link for the supplies that I'm using are in the video description, as well as the link for the reference photo. So if you're going to paint along, um, don't bother complaining to me that it is not on the screen because that is not how we do things here. You can go download it at the reference photo and put it anywhere on the screen that you like. Okay, so that is clean. Okay, now paint. So looking at this guy, I'm definitely gonna be using some black. Let's put that out. I'm also super excited and I cannot wait to share with you guys. I guess I can tell you about it. One of my plans for organizing my paint, I don't know if you can see behind here, this, oh, my tea, don't spill tea. Oh, hold on, let me sop that up. Um, but one of the, see how I've just got all my paint just dumped back here? It is really hard to find anything that I'm looking for. So I'm going to put, I've ordered some gold towel bars and I'm gonna hang on, they're double ones, I'll hang them back. You, it'll be off screen, you won't really see it. And S hooks, and I'm just gonna hang all of my tubes of paint all in rainbow order so I can easily find what I'm looking for all the time. That'll be here this weekend, I'm so excited. So, okay, I'm still looking for black because um, I'm going to just paint a solid black for the background here. And I apologize, you're gonna get to listen to me sniff my nose all night. There's nothing to, then I, some of you are gonna say, because I know I've seen those comments, blow your nose. I can't, there's nothing, it's just, it's just not how this is working for me. Um, okay, I need a phthalo blue anyway while I'm at it. So let's find some of these tubes of paint. Phthalo blue, phthalo green, black and white are gonna be the first colors that I need. I may use some transparent mi <coughs> mixing white later, so we'll pull that out. As I find stuff, I'll just pull them so I'm not looking so far. Let's see, still needing black, it might be over here. I've got my acrylic paints in three different locations in the studio, which definitely makes things different. Oh, yay, I found the black, okay. And this is Mars black. You wanna use Mars black versus ivory black for something like this because the ivory black is gonna be way too translucent. It's also a little bit of a warmer color. Yeah, it's kind of a brownish tint slightly. So, okay, let's get started on this. So, and as always, if you want to bid on this, the link is in the video description for the auction. But of course, as always, I do recommend, wait, make sure you like how this is going. Um, I'm working on a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. Just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. They did supply me with the canvas that I'm using here, but they were already the only canvas brand that I use, so no difference for me there. But um, for me, my go-to canvas, sorry, my mic is causing me some issues. Everything's causing me issues tonight. Um, for me, my go-to canvases are going to be the Fredericks Blue Label, one of my favorites, the Fredericks Belgian Linen, my absolute favorite, and then the watercolor canvas boards I really like because they're very smooth. And the reason that I want my canvas to be really smooth is it's gonna make it easier for me to get really smooth blending so I don't have real heavy, like I'm not fighting the canvas, the tooth of the canvas, and fine details are gonna be really smooth. It's not bumpy, so it makes doing those things very easy. Okay. So let's get that out of the way and let's just paint this a solid black to start with. Actually, let's go black. I'll go ahead and mix some tea. No, I'm gonna do black. I'm gonna do this in two layers to make it easier. So I'm just using a number, or it's a one inch Taclum bristled filbert. And let's just slop the black paint on there just to get a base layer so I'm not fighting the white of the canvas. Am I upside down? I am. Let's flip that over. Not that it makes a huge deal, but the back of the watercolor canvas boards has Fredericks written all over it. 
And I hate when I do that upside down. Again, it doesn't matter when it's framed. No one is ever going to know. But it still feels a little weird. I've done it many times. Some of you may own canvases from me like that. So with the Liquitex Basics, there are only two blacks that I use. And I do have the ivory black somewhere. I actually like it for glazing. It's nice for doing certain shadows and glazing techniques without being too opaque. It's just kind of a more translucent. But um, most of the time, like right now where I want full coverage, I'm just going to use my Mars Black. Now, the Mars Black, I'm not going to leave this straight black because this would be way too flat. I want to get some depth into this. So you'll often hear people talk about don't um, paint things straight black to mix or, you know, use other colors. Or some people won't use black paint at all. I'm not one of those. I actually love black paint. But typically, I'm going to mix another color in there to get some more depth. And that's what I'll end up doing here. So I'm not mixing the color in now. The reason for that is phthalo blue and phthalo green are both fairly translucent. And if I mix that in with this, I'm going to get a really, a little bit more of a streaky result. So I find, I'll, I think I'll get a better result, more what I'm looking for here by doing it. Just solid black, cover the white, and then we can paint the teal color over this to get that depth. And there are a million ways to get to the same end. So if you did it differently, I mean, if you wanted to mix the teal in first, you can certainly do that. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of some of my brush strokes by taking a mop brush that I did not clean very well last time. And I'm just going to lightly go over that, creating a few brush strokes just because I've got some dry paint in there I need to soak out. And then with these, this is just a, I'll fix the lighting on this is a hot mess right now. Ooh, we don't want auto there. I'll fix that in a second. But um, with these, you want, this is a blush brush, a powder brush, and it's really floofy. You should not be lift, getting much paint on these, so I should only need to rinse the tip of the bristles so I can get it dried quickly so it's ready to go next time I need to use it. And then I'll just take paper towels and rub that in circles on there to clean it. go okay and let's see if I can fix this because that is going to be horribly annoying oh well that actually looks pretty good we'll just leave it as that for now we'll see how that goes once I start painting color on there there we go okay so now I need to dry this Okay, now you want to make sure that's completely dry. If anything is mostly dry but not quite, I put the next layer on top, that's going to pull off blotches of this, which I'm going to let this, this still feels a little bit tacky. So that could mean that it's not dry all the way, or it could mean that it's just really hot. So let's go ahead and let that set for just a moment here. And that gives me a break to have some tea. Tonight is stash raspberry hibiscus with a little bit of honey in it. It's so good. Kind of tastes like Kool-Aid. Come on. Cool down. Yeah, I think it's dry. It's just really, um, really, really hot. Okay. So now I don't even, I'm not even going to rinse the black off my brush. I can leave that on there. I am going to put some more phthalo blue out though. I've already got some phthalo green. 
And to make teal, I do about a 50-50 mixture of phthalo blue and phthalo green. Just going to mix those together, throw some more water in there, and I'm okay with some of the black being on there. Actually, I'm going to put some black into some of it anyway, so it's not that light. And let's go ahead and put one more layer on top of this. And it's subtle. It's mostly the average person, when they look at this, they're, they're going to be like, why'd you just do that? It looks black. But what happens is, one, anytime you get extra layers on your painting, you're adding more depth to it because all these layers are semi-translucent. I mean, even your opaque ones usually have at least a little bit of translucency to them. So the light refracts through it in a way that creates depth. But the other thing is that even though the average person looks at it and goes, it just still looks black, it doesn't look as flat anymore. And that is the goal here. So we still want it really, really dark because we'll be putting all the light areas over it, but not flat black. Now, that said, going back to what the average person sees, the average person, you could paint it flat black and they're probably still going to like it just as much. The average person doesn't know what they're looking, looking at. But you and I will know that there is more depth. And if you were to put them side by side, most of the time, people will prefer the one that has more depth. They just don't realize that's what they're seeing. In person, there is more teal on this for sure. So I'm going to take another blush brush and let's just smooth that out. Just lightly go wiping over this. This brush has to be completely clean and dry. And you don't want a ton of paint. If it starts picking up too much paint, it will add brush strokes instead of getting rid of them. Okay, now I'm just gonna rinse the tips of that again. And I always like to have a lot of these available or ready to go because when one is drying, I need to be able to grab another one quickly. You don't really have time to be sitting here waiting for that. Oh, that's awesome. Ike Studio says, I love your videos. Thank you. I am an artist from Houston, Texas. I'm painting with you tonight. Yay. Oh, and good timing. We have from Rebecca Art. She has sent a super chat. Do you, do you guys hear that? Do you want a super chat? The boys say thank you. That is awesome. Hey, you paid for half the new treats. I just ordered them tonight. Oh, is the that in the way? Come here. There you go. Oh, brave cow walked around it. Good job. I know that was hard for, for you. He's afraid of everything. Okay, go lay down. Good boys. Go lay down. The cart's definitely in the way tonight. Oh, you're going to choke on it first. Lovely. Thank you for that. There. Oh, what a good cow. Look at him pretending how good he is. I'm pretty impressed with him. Thank you again. Okay. Um, so now this needs to dry. Okay, so right now this looks flat black, but in person, when you, you know, you can't really see it here, but when you shift the light, you do get, let's see if you can see on this one, you see how you can kind of start seeing the teal right in there? That's what we're going for. And then when I add the varnish over it, I'll put a high gloss varnish before I ship it to whoever buys it, that will end up bringing that out even more. But again, it, it really just depends on what angle the light is hitting it there. But it's the way the light is going to refract through that, giving it a lot more depth. And we'll be putting tons of highlights on top of that too. Okay, 
Next, we need to, actually, next I need to clean this brush out. So to wash that, I'm just gonna take a paper towel and pinch off as much paint as I can get. And now I can go ahead and rinse it in my water. Now there is a video with some very not true statements saying that for acrylic paints, you need to have a separate container for your clean water versus one that you're adding to your paint, your brush water, like cleaning versus mixing. That's BS. That is a person who makes up a lot of things who doesn't actually know a lot about acrylic paints, but presents himself as an expert. He makes crap up. He takes stuff like that's a watercolor thing. Watercolor, you need two separate things for paint. Acrylic paint, you do not. So watch who you listen to. Um, I mean, you can kind of tell by their own work how how skilled they are, but that is not from somebody who knows. They're, they're making it up for views because they're saying something that you've not heard that before. Oh my gosh, I got new information from this artist. That artist just pulled that up. I just spit. That artist pulled that out of their butt. Wow, how classy. I'm talking about butts and spitting at the same time. Um, Go me. But anyway, point is, there is a lot of information that's going to make your life a lot more difficult. So just be careful who you're listening to on some of that. If it's something that like, wow, no one's ever told me that before. There may be a reason that no one ever told you that. Okay, so I'm just going to take my drawing. I've drawn him out on tracing paper. I'm going to stick that on there. This needs to cool a little bit more. That's going to cause me some issues if I trace right over that while it's still that warm cool off Come on. okay and I'm going to take a piece of transfer paper and a little stylus so um, these sometimes you can get them cheaper when they're listed as being nail art tools or nail dotting tools uh, you can get a five pack for really inexpensive on Amazon although sometimes the ones for art are, are cheap so it just depends but it's the same thing and I'm just going to slide that under there. And I'm not really worried about the water ripples. I can freehand those in. I just want to get the general um, drawing of the fish. Fish clips. Now this eye is not perfectly round because you're looking on top of the fish, so that's gonna be at a different angle. Watch that when you, you draw that in. Not at a normal angle like we're looking from the side. That is probably good enough. And we have a, wait, hold on, let me get this up. One of the things I need to do is anywhere where it's, you can see it's kind of smudgy, you can just wipe that off where the transfer paper stuck a bit too much there. I'm gonna save that transfer paper because I may end up redrawing some of these fins or the markings on the fish to make my life easier later on, we'll see. But also we have from Kathy Davis said, we deserves another treat for being so good. Of course, Gibson too. Do you boys hear that? You want a super chat? This is really in our way tonight, huh? Let's see if we can kind of scooch that out of the way. Look at you being a good cow. You earn extra treats. One for you. Don't choke on it this time. That's a good cow. Good boys. Okay, go lay down. Lay down. 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 Go on. Keep going. I know it's hard to turn around. That's very scary because there's a cart there. Good boys. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Kathy. <coughs> On to the fish. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna worry about the water ripples because a lot of those I want to go over the fish. So I'm gonna paint him in first. And let's see, we're gonna be using white. I don't use orange paint unless I'm glazing with Liquitex Basics because the orange is really translucent. Also, I'm gonna be doing this in a slightly looser technique. I'm not gonna be painting in every individual scale super tight because it's a live stream, we've got an hour. So I'll be giving you the hint of scales without painting in all the shading on each individual one for this. Think faux finish. We want it to look like scales, but we're not making it exact. 
Um, let's see, I can use, definitely can use some red oxide. I've already got that out. I'm going to be using a little bit of violet. Do I have deep violet out? I've already got blue, I need to use this. And I wanna use the same blue to shade the fish as what the water is. So the same teals I'll be using there and we've already got those out. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get these paints organized. Um, that would probably work as a little something crimson. I can get away with that. I can't say that word. Ooh, there's a big one, quadonkadonk magenta. Let's go with the crimson. And we've got some, I need a lighter yellow to mix my orange. But I prefer to mix orange rather than using the orange Liquitex Basics. That Liquitex Basics, it's great for glazing. So I wouldn't say don't buy it, but as far as like getting a really good orange, probably not gonna happen easily. Also, we've got for from Oriole Beagle. Do you boys want another super chat? Thank you. You guys have already covered the cost of their the new bag of treats I ordered. That Amazon Prime same delivery, same day delivery. I ordered them. It it was like four fifty something. And it's still gonna get here today, which is crazy to me. Good boy. Say thank you, Oreo Beagle. This is good boy. It's also good cow. Okay, that's it. Go lay down. Go lay down. Keep going. Turn around. I know it's so scary, cow. Go lay down. Lay down. Okay, now let's see. So I'm gonna go, oh, I already have some deep violet out. I'll go ahead and put this out too though. That will probably give me more of an orange color that I want, but I find that I get a better orange if I mix it than just using that orange. I'm gonna use a smaller, I'm gonna start by layering and starting to get the texture of the white uh, for the um, scales. Now I am not going to just paint him solid white. I'm going to let some of the background color show through in a few areas. I'll use that to almost get shading. So let's, oh, I don't even have white out. My gosh, I'm really not ready. Where's my big white? I have a big one. You'd think it, oh, there it is. You'd think it'd be harder to lose. Now these big tubes of paint you can get, this one is 13.53 fluid ounces. So I know on most of my colors of paint, I don't buy the big ones like this. White is one that I use so often, it's worth it. But if you get a big tube of paint and you don't use it very fast or a big thing like this, what happens is once you get about halfway through, there's so much air trapped in there, it will start to kind of dry and go bad. So if you don't paint a ton, I would just get the normal sized ones. But if you are like white for me is the only one that I really, sometimes I'll get the, the big one in black, but white's the main one that I go through. I go with um, that. Okay. So we're going to start building up to get the texture of the fish. I'm not going to worry about the orange or anything like that. Just paying attention to what areas are going to be smooth and what areas will be more with the skin. So here's more smooth. See, it's not totally, you can still see some of the black showing through. That's okay for this. I will build this up. So right now, it, this is basically just mapping out where everything is gonna go. But see how there, I filled it in, but I left little lines where the outer line is so I know what goes where later. I'm not worried about oh, like spending too much time making it perfectly blended right now. That does not matter at this stage. We're just going to build this up. And if you guys could do me a huge favor, if you are in any art groups on social media, share my videos or the live streams. Like if there's an acrylic painting group I'm in, I normally share and I forgot to. But if you can share when I've got a live stream, that will help me so, so much. Help, and it'll help other students to find lessons because YouTube search function does not, it, it pretty much doesn't work anymore. You may not have noticed this, but when you, let's say you wanted to paint a koi fish and you did a search on Google or YouTube for koi fish acrylic painting, you'll see five, to six results. The rest are related to, similar to, suggested for you, you may like sort of things. You can't search page after page like you used to for the thing that you're looking for until you find the lesson you want. It's very hard for people to find what they're looking for on YouTube now. You see what they want you to see. The algorithm is just terrible with that for lessons. So um, if you can share, you would do me and any artist that you follow such a huge favor. It'll help other people to find us where they normally wouldn't be able to.
unfortunately the way YouTube works unless you're entertaining on your like normal tutorials just don't do well um, unless you're doing what do they call edutainment you have and that takes me so long that's why I don't produce many videos now because it takes so long to make a video like that which means less lessons for you guys so when I do these live streams if you can share it or really any of the videos I will love you forever and ever and ever As we move back here, I'll start pulling more of the teal in. Just want that to kind of fade out into the background. And see how I'm leaving my brush stroke showing a little bit. This is just going to add a bit of texture, a bit of detail for the, the scales once I get to that point. Now, if you've got a canvas that has a lot of tooth, yours is going to be very bumpy looking at this stage. That's why I say a, a smooth canvas is helpful. And if you have a canvas, let's say you went and bought a bunch on sale and realized, ooh, these are too bumpy for me. You can use gesso. I like the Liquitex gesso. Put a coat of that, let it dry, another coat, let it dry, one more coat, let it dry, so two to three coats, letting it dry in between completely, and then take sandpaper that's somewhere between like a 220 or 230 to 330, right? I don't know what the numbers are on sandpaper, but around that, and you can sand it down to a nice smooth finish, and it'll make your life much easier when you go to paint. Now notice that I'm curving this. I want this, everything here curved. I don't want straight lines here. We've got to make him look three-dimensional. And part of that is making sure that he's rounded. And as I build his scales, I also want to full, follow that rounded uh, movement. So we've got the fins here. See, I'm letting some of the black show through. Look, I just have all that detail with the lines with not having to put detail with the lines. If you can make your life easier, do that. I mean, sure, I could fill it in more, but, uh, and then repaint that, but let's, let's not add time. Yeah, um, someone said they wish that Rumble had more, more artists on there. The problem, Rumble's weird. I occasionally upload on Rumble, but it is odd where I'll go through and I will suddenly have more dislikes than likes, which is unheard of. Like that, it is weird. I'm like, do people just not like art content on there? Do people just go there for like news and stuff? Cause that, I was really surprised at the negative um, side of that. Um, so yeah, as an artist, I didn't find it to be very welcoming. So that's why I don't bother. Uh, I mean, I haven't made new videos. I probably should upload. It doesn't, it, it's free. I may as well upload it wherever I can get views, I guess. But I don't get views um, at all. Like, I do not get found on Rumble at all. There are very few people who, who watch my stuff over there. By few, I mean like five. Seriously, I may get five views on a video. And it's like, but yeah, unfortunately, not amazing for me. And I imagine that a lot of artists have found the same thing where it's like, why would I bother? And I gave it a good go. I mean, every single thing I uploaded, I uploaded um, on Rumble. It wasn't doing me any good. But again, it's free, so it's like, hey, why not? So now look at all these streaky lines. This is just detail without having to like put in actual detail. So as I go through here, I'm following the curve of that fin and I'm gonna leave that, these darks in there. Look at, I'm basically getting shading without having to sit there and blend two colors. Don't overfill this in. We want the black lines to show through a bit. Look it, it looks like the lines already on the fin and we haven't even done any shading. And remember with painting, this is a layering process. You are going to have some very ugly layers as you build up. Don't let that frustrate you. I'm not pushing hard. I don't need this to be super opaque. I thin this out with a decent amount of water. See this one's just kind of a hint in the background so I'm not going too crazy. And I've got a little ripple for where the water is going to be. I put my finger in it because it was a bit too bright there.
Okay, I'm going to make these a little bit more defined now for some of the, the where the orange is going to be. And I'm just looking at the general shape of these scales. But again, they're not exact, not for something that we're getting done quickly. This is gonna be a much looser look. But I still need them to look like scales. So just because we're doing it quickly doesn't mean it's going to look bad. Watch the direction. I'm constantly looking at that reference photo to see, okay, here they were going this direction, here they start moving down this way. That is so important. And this will take a lot of layers to build up the scale. So when you first start doing it, doing them, even when I start putting the orange, it's gonna look terrible. This is gonna look terrible for a while. Start lightening some of these areas up where I know the yellows and such will go. Again, if you want this reference photo, the link is in the video description along with all of the supplies that I'm using. So I'm just reworking the lines that are already there. I'm not putting in new lines. But I need that to be a bit lighter on a few of these. I'm not pushing very hard. The harder you push with your brush, the, the thicker the line will be. Now, why wouldn't I just paint orange or the reddish orange color, even if I mixed it myself, right on top of the dark? Because it's not going to be orange. It, the, it's too translucent, so the black background would show through. I've got to paint that white first in order for any of these other colors to really show up. Again, just going around this direction, making it still look more three-dimensional. And then as he fades out, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling some of the teal in now. The teal, where I put this, these are really where the white is of the fish, but he's, oh, let's get some water in there. So it's, I'm using my fine mist sprayer, link is in the video description if I did my job right, which is always questionable. Tinting the color. Now this isn't really a glaze because it's mixing in with the paint that's there. A glaze would be dry first. The first layer would be dry and then I'd be tinting the color on top. So it's a bit different. If this is starting to dry, it's fine. It just isn't a true glaze. There's actually white still on my brush here. Getting this teal color in between the fins. We'll add some over here. This is why having white on the brush is good. This is gonna help that show up better over the dark areas. Okay. Oh, let's get some around here too, just a bit. Need a bit more water on that brush. Like there's a decent amount of white on there too. Now remember the white, very little will stay truly white. Those are gonna be your brighter highlights. So what is all, all of the areas that are going to be white or white, like it's the white part of the fish are really what I'm doing with the teal now. Paint that little whisker in still. Okay, let's rinse this and dry it. And we can start, start layering some of the oranges and yellows in. want to go even darker right in here. Let's do that now. 
I'm gonna pull some of the black and teal. So this is just pulling from the color I mixed earlier with black and teal, but now there's no longer any white on there. I'm gonna get it just a little bit wet with the fine mist sprayer so that I can blend it smoothly. And I want a really soft line. I don't want such a harsh line. I know the reference photo has a harsh line, but I wanna soften that out a bit as I move back. Let's pull a little bit more black into that just for that outer, outer edge. See how it just kind of disappears, just soft edge. Okay. So let's start right here. We've got this cream tone. So I'm going to be using a bit of yellow and I can use my magenta color, any of the magentas that you chose. And if it's too pink, I'm gonna pull a little bit of my deep violet in there. Get some more white, more yellow. That's a bit too peach for me. Okay, so this area of his cheek. Now that was something I actually toned down. The original reference photo that I found, uh, I think this one came from Pixabay, was really yellow, which I didn't love. It was just a bit too harsh, so I made it more of a cream tone. Now you can kind of see how some of the black is peeking through still because I had so many brush strokes. Great, it looks like detail without taking the time to make detail. I am a fan of that. If you spend too much time trying to make everything perfectly smooth, you actually make everything look like a weird plastic doll thing. It looks better if it's a little bit more rough. I'm gonna pull a little bit of this peach color, not too much back there. Okay. Oh, someone at my ring, or the ring says someone's at the door. I'm guessing that's the boy's new bag of the word I'm not going to say out loud. Wow, they really did deliver today. That was weird. Okay, yellow and my red again to get my orange tone. More yellow if you want it to be more orangey. If you want it more of a reddish orange, then we're gonna move obviously more red. And the red is going to typically be more powerful. I don't want to mix white into this or I'm gonna get peach. Definitely add some more red. It's almost too much red, so I'm gonna use this on the areas that need to be darker. That I'm gonna to have to go with more white first. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, let me grab a clean brush and get more white because that is so dark. The orange that I need is never gonna show up over that. Let's do white first so that that gets a chance to dry before I'm ready for it. And for this, I want, the, I want there to be a decent amount of paint on the brush. Don't get skimpy here. If we're gonna go more impressionistic, and this is a, a mistake a lot of artists make when they wanna have a looser style, they don't use enough paint on the brush. Really, that's true for most things anyway when it comes to painting. It is more common for an artist to not have enough paint than to have too much. And this is a bit on the light side, that's okay. I can come back through and darken that up as I go. Let's 
be careful where this blends over the blues, you get a greenish tone. See how even these scales, they have to, I'm really watching the direction here as we start building this. Now, as much as I love my Liquitex Basics, when you do things that are more impressionistic, I actually do like where you've got that looser style, the Liquitex heavy body or the soft body that are a bit more peg pigmented and especially the heavy body because you can get that the chunkier brush strokes. Those look really nice. Those are really the only times that I like the Liquitex heavy body. The heavy body dries too fast and it does it it's just too thick. I'm, I'm not normally a huge fan, but when you're doing a looser style, it's actually really nice in those cases. See, when I get in here, I'll be pulling more reds, but I'm just going to build that with the lighter color first. What will happen is when I put the darker reds on it, parts of the lighter orange color are going to show through. And it just looks like I did all of this shading when clearly I didn't. I was just layering. Add a little bit of white in there because I don't want the inside of his mouth to be that dark. We do have some areas with more of a peach tone. I'll let some white, I'm going to pull a little bit of magenta into that. I'll use more magenta as I move my way back. Just adding a little bit more and a little bit more magenta. Now on the reference photo, this area would be highlighted more. I don't want mine that highlight. I want that to fade out into the distance so your focus really is around the, fo the fish's face. Now notice where I'm holding the brush too. My hand is back pretty, far. This actually gives me more control. You may think that you've got more control if you're up here, but your brush strokes are going to be really stiff if you're holding it up here. The only time that I hold the brush to where my hand is towards the tip is if I'm using a liner brush and I'm doing, you know, way more controlled areas. But if you do that on something like this, it'll end up being very stiff looking. And see, as I build this up, look how I've got light orange and the darker reddish tone. And actually, let me show you over here. It's a little bit different you can see it's a lot darker. Now I can start pulling some of the deeper reds over the oranges that I did. I just heard, hear Matt's in the, um, my husband is in the chicken room hanging out with the birds and I hear Sue, she starts screaming, which she, she's being a little too clingy. He's in the room with her at the time I can hear him and they're going, shut up, shut up, shut up, which really just makes her more excited because birds like noise. So it's funny. It's like, that's why she's screaming because she knows she can get him to start doing the shut up thing and she thinks that's a fun game. Birds are funny. 
My favorite is when I'm in the other room and I can hear Matt in there. You know somebody bit him or is attacking, trying to fight with one of the other birds when you hear him and they're going, what is wrong with you? That always cracks me up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a cockatiel, a parrotlet, and a um, Indian ringneck. So Matt hangs out with them every evening while he plays his video games or watch sports or whatever he's doing. It's in there with the birds. So just looking at where some of these shadows are on the face. Let's see, we've got a little bit of a shadow around his fish lips. Now I need to darken this up because if this isn't dark enough, when I put the highlights, the shine, they're not gonna really look shiny. In order for the shine to show up, we need the darks to be a lot darker. This whole area is too dark, so let's just go ahead and lighten that up now. Okay, let's pull, start pulling in some of the black. It's okay if that black has some teal mixed in with it. We'll actually do that on purpose. few little specks in there. Oh, I like this guy already. You won't believe the difference. When we start putting the water ripples, it will change everything. But we've got to do this first before that really looks amazing. Some ripples there in the fin, which really it's not that the fin has ripples, it's just the way the water is rippling. little black specks here. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna go with a much lighter, this teal color. I'm gonna mix white in with it, which will really give me more of a gray tone, but I need to get some other shades for some of these scales. That may be a bit too dark. Let's rinse that and reload with some white. And see, it's already coming together so much, and it's just a layering process. Those first layers were really scary. But you've got to get those in order to get to this stage where it starts to, to well, it starts making sense. Get a little bit of a highlight there, and I'll put a definite white highlight as well, but just blocking in a little bit of that now. But see, we've got the look of scales, but we didn't sit there and paint and shade every single one. We just wanna make sure they're going in the right direction. That was really the big thing there. Okay, let's see. I need to do, I do need some detail work around the eye though. So I'm gonna to switch to my liner brush for that. We're almost ready for the ripples. So my liner brush, when you go with a liner brush, see how long the bristles are? You want the longer bristles. If you go with a brush that's just teeny tiny short bristles, you may think it looks like a smaller brush, so that will give you finer detail. It won't, it actually does the opposite. You want the long, thin uh, bristles. And we're going to mix water in with this. So I need to, I'm gonna do white first, and then I'll glaze the orange on top, but see how I mix water 
I'm gonna dip that in some more water and I just twist that in. With the liner brush, you have to have a decent amount of water or it is not gonna work. If you've got a chunk of paint on there, that is not going to give you the detail that you need. So I'm gonna actually dab some of that off of my easel and let's define the details in here. And I'm gonna come, let's see, we've got that highlight. Let's define that a little bit more. I'll be putting orange over most of that, but I'm also gonna pull a little bit of the black. Actually, it's the dark teal. The black mixed with teal, just to line some of these. Okay. And I'll tone that down a little bit in a moment. I do want to get some definition on these fins. So I'm just getting the edges of those. And then of course we have our little whiskers. Let's define that a little bit better. Okay. Now I'm gonna start the water ripples and then we'll also get the highlights on the fish. I'll probably do some shading with the water ripples. I'm gonna hold off on the brightest highlights on the fish until after I get the ripples in. The water ripples, I'm going to be using the same teal. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to, or water, it'll be a lot of water, a little bit of white to it. And I'm going to use another, this is just a Teflon bristle brush. And I'm just gonna hold this sideways as I paint it in. Um, do I want this one? Yeah, this one's probably fine. I can switch to a smaller one if it ends up being a bit awkward. Gotta have water, it's not gonna flow smoothly. So I'm mixing that in. Let's see. Yeah, that color looks like it should be good. And I don't care if they're exact. I just want close. So these are my initial buildup. I'm going to end up glazing over a lot of this. So these are going to be my brightest ones. That is really thick. So I'm going to wipe some of that brush or the paint off. Yeah, it has to go over the fish, over the water, make sure that connects. This is gonna look way different when I glaze over this. So as bright and scary as it is now, it's gonna be much prettier in a moment here. I'm just copying the shapes I see on that reference photo. I don't need them exact, but I do want them to be close. I'm just 
lightly going over this so that when I tint it with the teal, that will still be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna do that anywhere where I want it to be a little bit lighter. Just lightly going over this. And the reason that this looks so smooth is that the canvas is that smooth. If you've got a bumpy canvas, yours is not gonna be quite that smooth. So don't be frustrated if it's not looking quite the same. You may need to, you can kind of correct it by adding a bit more paint and water, but it's still, a smooth canvas is just gonna make your life easier. I'm going to define a few more of these a little bit more before I glaze, start glazing. So there's a lot more white in that mix. Same thing on some of these. I'm, I'm just working with what's already there, but it's going to give me variation because it's not just one solid line. I now have a lighter one, little sections inside each of the ones I just did. Okay, let's dry that and do our first glazing over that. Now for this glaze, I do not want any white mixed in with it. I just want the teal and the aqua. Um, I sh if it's a little bit too bold, I might tone it down a little bit with black, but that is not my plan at this point. Right now my plan is just teal or phthalo blue and phthalo green. But there is a possibility that ends up being more bold than I want, we'll see. that has to be thinned with a decent amount of water. After I make my mixture and get the color that I want, what I will do, I'm gonna rinse the brush out because otherwise I'm gonna get way too thick of chunks if I want it to be a nicer, uh, more translucent layer. There we go. Thin that with more water, clean brush. I'm gonna dab that on my paper towel or it's gonna be too bold. We're just gonna wipe that right across everything and this just tints that color, not over the fish. Maybe the edges of the fish are fine, but not over the whole fish. a little bit up here so the fish is more in the water. Okay, let's go ahead and dry that. Actually, that color, while I've got it out, I want to do a little bit of shading on the fish's face with that. Not much.
Okay. Actually, I don't even need to dry that yet. I can leave that wet and start pulling some highlights over the these now. Oops, too much water. Let that soak into the paper towel. There we go. Not pushing very hard. I'm using a small tack on bristle filbert, a really light hand. You can see everything is a layering process. It's not going to look good your first few layers of anything. Don't let that scare you. Just layer until it looks good. Now what you want to avoid, don't just do squiggles. That's an easy thing you think water squiggles. Don't do squiggles. Look at the shapes in that. That's why we've got to keep looking at the shapes so that we get those right. They don't need to be exact, but you want to get that general movement. And for some reason, our brain says water squiggle. So I'm not completely covering those previous lines. I'm making thinner versions on top of what's already there. I think I would like even a little bit more green. So I'm just going to take some phalo green, a slightly larger brush than that. I'm going to thin that phalo green out with water. And I'm going to pull that in between some of these just to get some variation. Yeah, that's much nicer. I like that. Mostly in the dark areas. You're not really able to see that that well, unfortunately, on that camera. I'm pretty good on pretty thick. Okay, we've got to get the shine marks on the fish and a little bit more shading, and he is almost done. Fish is really where we want to focus now. Actually, one thing I do want to do, just to create a little more atmosphere, I like the little white bubbles and such that are in the water. What I'm going to do is take my teal. There's a little bit of white. I'm, I'm using a really stiff brush, and I have no idea where my palette knife is. I just saw that recently, too. Oh, no, that's not it. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll just take the back of a, another brush. I was all excited when I found it. Well, I don't know where I put it. And I'm just going to get a little bit of, maybe a little bit more white than that. I just like the atmosphere that this creates. Just spraying a little bit of that. This may not show on that camera. It usually doesn't. I'll show you on the other one. Yeah, that added a little, that looks really good. Give me just a second and I'll show you here. Okay, this isn't done. I'm still working on the fish, but you can see, maybe you can't see, there's little sprinkles, little, little dots all through here now where I sprayed that. Okay, back to work. So let's get to some of the shading and highlights on the fish. I'm just going to take straight white now. This needs to be titanium white. We do not want anything transparent. You can use a liner brush. Actually, I'm going to switch to a round brush for some of this. Um, where is it? This one's the Simply Simmons 8 round. Um, where was I? This is what is going to make him look shiny, especially the parts that are out of the water.
Okay, let's see. We needed some orange in here around his eye over the areas that we previously painted white. I had to paint them white first so the orange wouldn't show up when I painted that over it. And now I'm just gonna fuss around with some of the values on the fish for a bit. So let's get some darker reds in there for sure. Especially as I move away. So that's interesting. Um, someone said, where was that? Um, I missed it. Someone had men mentioned to put koi make bubbles and make sure to put bubbles on the water surface. You know the reason I'm not going to? I'm not used to making bubbles at this angle. I don't have a reference photo. And I would completely screw up the perspective. And I know you're thinking it's a bubble, that should be easy. I've never done one of this, I maybe have, but I haven't done it enough at this perspective that I can just throw it in there and have it look good without a reference photo. So I'm not going to take that artistic liberty. And really, I'm just using the red now, or the azul, whatever, crimson. Now someone wants sinking coins. I, well, if I can do bubbles without a reference photo, what makes you think I can do coins without a reference photo? That wouldn't end well at all. And really it's a perspective thing. This is not a perspective. I don't paint, I mean, I've done, one of my favorite paintings is actually of Koi, but I don't do them that often. And so I definitely need a decent reference photo to work from this angle, because it's not one I'm super familiar with. Whereas if I were working with like a normal marine scene, an underwater ocean scene, I do those so often. I can throw whatever in without a reference photo and usually be pretty safe. Here, I am not going to risk that. the light glaze with that red just in a few spots so this is just one big mass that has no shading and that needed a bit of help that is too red I'm gonna need to tone that down in a moment you know and doing things like that that you're not comfortable with without a reference photo that's how things go horribly wrong I mean if I'm a craft artist Sure, fine, painting, you know, the, the paint and sip style paintings. It's fine, it looks like a coin, no one cares. It looks like a bubble, no one cares. But when you actually are doing fine art and realism, then it matters. Then we're gonna put a little bit more effort into um, making it done more correctly and using a reference photo, a decent reference photo. a little bit more water that was just kind of floating there and not getting me a nice line. This is always my favorite part. You just kind of layer and keep messing with stuff until, until you hit that stage where you just love it. I mean, I'm pretty much already there, but a few more little things.
all this variation in the shapes, see how his face starts coming together? You, I need variation in the shapes, but also just the different brush strokes really help. Don't worry about trying to overblend. I see, I see really skilled artists that do that. Well, heck, I did that for years. Everything, once I learned how to blend things smoothly, I thought everything needed to be blended like that. And my work definitely suffered for it. scales in there with the lighter color. Now another thing that we can do is play around a little bit with the transparent mixing white. So this isn't going to be, well obviously not as opaque, hence the word transparent mixed in there. But I'm going to take a bit of that and my teal. Let's wipe a little bit over some of this water in here. So I can light, get a lighter mark, but if I added white, like normal white, it would be foggy. This isn't going to look foggy. I'm just adding to the lines that I have so they're not so flat wiggles. I think he's about done. I think that's about as far as I want to take that. I really like where he's at. A few more ripples maybe over him. A little bit more. Actually, I want to go more with white. I'm going to make the fin stand out a little bit more. I don't want it as bright as what the reference photo has, but I want it a little bit more bright than what I've got. Um, here we go. using around here. There we go, just pull that in a bit more. I'm gonna do the same thing here, not as much on this fin. Oops, too much. Let me grab a bit of, let me grab a wet brush here. I've got a bit of a smudge. Oh, that actually worked. Just pull that out. Taking a clean brush that has a little bit of water to soften that. There we go. That we just I wanted it to stand out, just not as much, not quite as much as the reference photo, but more than what I had. And now I just need to sign it. So I will use my liner brush for that. And I'll just use a lighter teal. And the sign at the bottom corner here. Oh, 
Okay, and I will show you in this one, and you can still bid on this guy if you want to own him. I'm gonna make sure that's actually running properly. Oops, wrong mouse. Um, yep, the starting bid is $75 if you want your chance to own this guy here. Uh, what am I looking at? There we go. So there is the finished painting. It's a little bit more, slightly more teal, a little bit more green in the water than what the reference photo has. Or not the reference photo, but the, there we go. I think I can get that close and have it in focus. Um, definitely one of those I like better in person than what I'm seeing on screen, but I like him. He came out good. So again, link for that if you, if you are in the US and you wanna bid on him, that is linked below and he will have a high gloss varnish over him before I ship him out. Okay, so now I will go through. If you've got any questions, leave those and we will start answering those. Yeah, whatever, I can all stay. Oops, wrong button. This one gets turned toned down. So my studio has some upgrades that I've been doing. I've got two of the gallery glass. So it looks like stained glass. You can't really see it here, but I will, I'll be posting about that later. Our, in the future those of you on discord have seen what i've been doing or yeah on our patreon discord um but i've got two done i'm starting the next one tomorrow that one will have a goldfish swimming through a forest but it's really the the mood in this studio is already so much better and i'm probably only halfway done the hard stuff the most of the big painting is done but i still have to build the frames and then do the gallery glass so that is i'm excited to show you that but it, the studio is coming along and then we'll get into some more of the bigger um bigger, more involved, surreal paintings I really want to start doing more of. And this room is definitely giving me, like putting me in the mood for that. Okay. So before we get started with the questions, uh, if you have not already, or if you've not already checked out my Patreon, take a look at that. I've got, as soon as you sign up for as little as $6 a month, you get access to all of my tutorials. I've been making tutorials on there most of the time, once a week, since 2000 and end of 2014. There are over 400 lessons. So it's not like I quickly in a couple of months put up 400 crappy lessons. You've got years worth, so almost 10 years worth of lessons for as little as $6 a month in multiple mediums, acrylics, oils, colored pencil, pencil, or you know, graphite, charcoal, airbrushing. Um, there's some digital painting. I've been doing more of those. I need to finish the flamingo I'm currently working on. So that lesson will be coming too. Maybe I'll do that for this week. Um, We've all kinds of stuff. And the cool thing with the digital painting, I'm doing it on a tablet now so that if you've got an Apple, um, like an iPad, you can do it with that. I've got a Samsung, you can do it on that. You don't have to have the big expensive Wacom tablet, like whatever, if you've got a tablet that has a pressure sensitive pen for drawing on, you can do digital painting that way. And it is so much fun. It, this is not AI art or photo manipulation. It's actually painting, but on a tablet, which means you're sitting in a doctor's office, you just bring your tablet with you. You have all of your art supplies, all of your colors, everything is with you. It is amazing. So anyway, um, I've got more lessons with that coming up. Multiple, there's, gosh, ink tents, watercolor. I can't even think about, I have so many mediums I wear, I teach over there. So there's definitely something for, for just about everyone. The only thing I don't do are soft pastels besides pan pastels, but like pastel pencils, that's the only thing I'm, I'm really out on. Um, Check that out, link is in the video description and new videos almost every week. I always said every week, I've been saying almost every week because sometimes a lesson is really three lessons in one and so it takes a couple weeks to get done. I am like on the verge of sneezing, that's why I'm making faces. Like it's been on the verge for about five minutes now. It's getting bad. Here we go and then it's leaving. That's, good. I just wish I could sneeze and be done with it. Anyway, um, but check that out, patreon.com slash LaCree. You're gonna get more lessons there with me than pretty much anywhere else because I've been doing it for so, so very long. And the lessons are getting better all the time. I'm trying to include more and more of what you guys have been asking for. We can all thank Fly Me to the Moon. She has finally convinced me to start providing line drawings for those of you who need it um, for your initial artwork. So anyway, okay. Um, someday I'm, this sneeze is going to come. 
Heather said, how do you clean acrylic painting that's over 30 years old and has impasto? I have no clue. I would contact a framer and ask them to give you an idea because that, I'm, I'm not going to give you bad ID. I, I would be making it up and as many, as, as popular as that is on YouTube, I'm not one of them. If I don't know, I'm just going to tell you, contact a professional in that because that is not, I can paint them cleaning like that. I don't know. Um, we've got, speaking of fly me to the moon, we've got a super chat, <coughs> a super chat from fly me to the moon it says fat hounds. You guys want a super chat? Say yes, please. Thank you. Say thank you so much. Oops, we're getting down to the bottom crumbs. I'm trying to give them both even sized pieces. One for you, one for the bad cow. Good boys. Say thank you. Now go lay down. That's all. Lay down. Go on. Go lay down. Keep going. All the way. Gibson, I'm missing a hound. Fine. I'll lay down if I have to. Okay. <laughs> Stephanie said, how do I sign my signature on canvas with texture? Oops, that just jumped. I didn't finish reading it. Um, I rarely sign my canvases because they have texture. Thicker paint, more paint. I'm not sure. I don't paint with texture, so I don't really have any good tips for you there. Um, I'm not sure. Um, you could flatten an area out that you know you're going to sign. Maybe kind of keep that area a bit more smooth. That would be an idea. It's probably what I would do. Um... Nick said, what kind of transfer paper do you use? My white transfer paper ain't worth a flying flip. You know, I've been using Low Cornell forever and they don't make it anymore. You can't find it. So the next one I've been using, do I have it linked in my video description? Nick would know, the other Nick. Um, I don't remember the brand and I don't think I have. Do I have the packaging right here? There's another one I've been using. So the one you saw me using today was an old Low Cornell. Um, no, I don't have it. I don't remember the brand on it. I, I apologize. I, I buy transfer paper like once every 10 years. So it lasts so long. So I don't remember. Um, but I do believe, I think it's in my video description. And if not, I don't know. I'll have to look into that for you. Hold on. Actually, I should stop being lazy. That's actually important. Um, Let's see if I'm logged into Amazon on this, this computer. Um, orders. Did I buy it this way? Stop. Yeah, that was Low Cornell. Actually, if I look that up, I should be able to. Uh, that's what it was that I'm using now is the Royal white graphite paper, the royal one. I think that's the one that I'm using now, which I don't know. Is that the one? I don't remember if I like that one that much. It's not the graphite one, I don't think. Maybe it is. Royal brush, that must be the one. Um, Low Cornell was always my favorite, but I know this is not helpful at all, huh? Um, do we have, if I see it, I might remember. It must be the Royal one. Yeah, I think that's gotta be the one that I've, I've got now because it's the only one that looks familiar to me. That must be what I'm using. Well, not today, but that would be the alternative. Okay. Um, my answer for all of tonight's questions are, I don't know. I'm so, well, at least I'm not just making stuff up, right? Uh, let's see. Aurora said, just for just starting to sell art, would you suggest beginning with eBay or starting a website? And with the website, how would you get it, get started? Is there a particular company you'd suggest? Okay. So I can't tell you for certain what the best of the best. Well, I can tell you what the best, <laughs> the best I'm using EMWD who I've been very happy with and WordPress. You have to put a little bit more work into that than let's say you do have websites where um, it's kind of your all in one, you build on there. Uh, Nick, or not Nick, uh, Joseph, which one are you using? Um, you, or you had one, I think a free version. I prefer the ones that are paid because then you don't have advertisements all over, you get more options. Um, it's, why can't I think of anything tonight? I think my allergies have clogged up my brain. Um, 
Joseph, what is it? Um, the I can't think of either of them, but there are websites like that. Okay, is somebody telling me? Because hopefully, um, and I'm apparently missing questions. Um, hold on. I can tell you what not to do, anything to do with GoDaddy. They will screw you over so bad, which is convenient because they were originally the biggest porn company, um, porn promoting thing, so fitting. But GoDaddy is a, like, one of, a lot of the ones that are really, really, um, are really cheap are Wix and Weebly. Those are the two I can't, couldn't think of. The, that sort of website. You can build. It's easier. I do recommend, if you're serious about your art at all and you want people to take you seriously, build a website without a doubt. But also, you can list on eBay. People who don't, like if you've not built a name for yourself, you want the website no matter what. But sometimes it's hard to get people to trust just buying off a website they never heard of before. So they're more comfortable buying from you off eBay. But you want that website where they can look you up, where it's kind of like, it's gonna show a gallery of all your other work and what, you know, your artist statement, your bio, your all that stuff you want on your website. So there are options like Wix and Weebly. You have to be very, very careful. And GoDaddy, one of the things GoDaddy does is buy out. So they will say that this is the biggest issue with them. They regularly tell people, you were late on your annual payment to renew your domain name, they buy it for themselves and try to sell it back to you for hundreds or thousands of dollars, um, depending on how much they think that your web domain is worth. They tried doing it to me with, they own, GoDaddy bought LaCree, I think they bought LaCreeFineArt.com or .net, one of those, which I don't use, I just have LaCree.com. They bought one of them and tried to sell it to me. Like, no dude, I bought the one I wanted, I'm not like, have fun paying for that to keep it because I'm not going to use it. You, they can't legally use it because that's a name that is like, they can't, they legally cannot use lawcreefineart.com because it, it gets into trademark issues and, and copyright and, and stuff like that. Like there's, I forget what the, the actual law for that is. They couldn't use it, but they pay for it annually so that I can't, unless I want to pay them for it. Like they are the sleaziest company. And it's not that other companies don't do that, but GoDaddy is one that I know for certain run. Um, a lot of these sites where it's like, oh, it's only $5 a month or whatever. It sounds good, but if you need help, oh, you are going to pay up the rear to get any kind of customer service, any kind of help. So it doesn't end up being worth it. For me, for my website, I've, I don't remember, EMWD, if you look at them, actually, if you go to my website, I've got an affiliate link. Um, go to lawcree.com and the affiliate link, if you want to do me a favor, is at the bottom, assuming that still works. Um, EMWD, I've been with forever. The original owner, unfortunately, died in 2020, but the new people who bought it have been wonderful. I have no, like, I, I've, they've been so helpful anytime I needed, needed help. But what do they have for their prices? Do they have it here? Domain names, VPNs, email, hosting, learn more. So, um, Let's see, hosting plans, shared hosting, eleven ninety five a month with them, and um, yeah, I've just had way better. Like I, I personally, that's where I go. That's who I buy my domain through. That's everything is done with them. But um, yeah, some of like Wix and Weebly though, just to get started, that may be a good option for you. It's just that if you needed help with anything, you're probably not going to get it. So that's the downside. The other thing is a lot of these cheaper companies are so bad. As far as I know, GoDaddy is about the worst that it gets because you will be on time with your payment and they will still come back and be like, no, nah, we didn't get it. It was late. Now you owe us more money. Like they, so many of these companies are so bad. I had one years ago, was it one in onecom or ABC something? I forgot what it was. But one of those did, tried doing that to me. They said they didn't get the payment, turned off my website and then char charged me a reconnect fee that they would never refund me. They never did give that back. And I was afraid you can go through your bank if someone tries screwing you like that and have them reverse a charge. They've got control of my website right now. Like that was, this was back in like, God, 2001, I don't know, it was a long time ago. Maybe before that, because it was before I, I went with EMWD. But it was such a problem, and I didn't feel that I had any, like I couldn't really fight back to get my money back, and they would not refund me. Um, even though they admitted, oh yeah, we, are the, we were wrong, but also we're not giving you the money. They charged like an extra $80 or, like it was crazy. It was absolutely insane what some of these companies will do. So anyway, um, yes, sell on eBay, 
So on Etsy, because people are going to find you there and maybe be more trusting on buying things, but also have your website where you have everything else. They could buy from your website if they want to, but also if they feel more comfortable buying something on eBay or Etsy because it has trust built into that, that's not a bad idea. And how do you get people to your website? You're going to do that by promoting on social media. So you've also at the same time got to be promoting your social media pages. But a lot of artists seem to think that having stuff on Etsy, that's my website. Having stuff on Facebook, that's my website. None of those are yours at all. You don't own crap. If you want a web, like your website is your website. With Facebook, look at that. The, the way the algorithm is now, no one sees pages they follow. It is rare for someone to see. I've got over 30,000 people following me on Facebook. If I post, whoever's chewing, wait, stop. Who, um, if I post on Facebook, maybe 50 of you will see it out of 30,000 unless I pay. They, those are all pay to play type sites. They're not yours. If you want something that is yours, has all your information, people can see it, have uh, posting a blog on your website is great for, you know, coming up on Google searches and such. Such, But yeah, definitely have a website, but also eBay and Etsy aren't bad ideas. I, Etsy's got some serious problems. Like I personally like eBay. Like if I were going to sell something on one or the other, I would personally use eBay over Etsy. But yeah, that's, that's my rambling about that. I hope that helped. Um, what did I miss? Uh, Brittany said, have you ever tried acrylic gouache, which is different from traditional gouache? I did. I used it with, um, it came in a smart art box, but honestly, I'm not familiar enough with gouache in any way. Like I know what it is and I've used it, but I've not used it enough to be able to really give you a, here is a breakdown of this is different and that is different. I don't know. It just felt like really mad acrylics to me. So um, kind of like Inktense in a way. But I haven't used it enough that I can really say, God, tonight is just seriously night of I don't know. Uh, Flyman and Moon said, discuss different blacks. Are there any more matte, which is the most solid, like not transparent? I Personally, I use the Liquitex Basics in the, um, the Mars black, my brain, Ser I'm, I'm blaming the allergies. There's so much pressure on my head. I don't think that there's, an, there's no room for the thoughts to get through, but, or my memory, but um, the Liquitex matte, or, or Liquitex tends to be a bit more matte there. Maybe it's more satin, but it's, it's more flat than let's say Liquitex heavy body or the soft body. The Liquitex also doesn't dry as fast. So that's a huge bonus for me. Um, I mean, it's fast dry and it's acrylics, but not like heavy bodies just for, I don't like, I don't like working with it. It dries, it dries too fast on my palette and on the canvas, but the, um, let's see, we've got ivory black is going to be more translucent. If you, you can try their other brands of black. I, I've even seen ads for something that's supposed to be the most flat, darkest black. I've not tried it. I kind of am interested in it. I don't even remember the name, but I've seen ads for that one. Um, the soft body and heavy body, they're going to have a higher gloss to them with, when it comes to Liquitex, that's what I use. So that's what I'm going to talk more about. Those are going to have a higher gloss, but when I, when this is dry, I put a high gloss varnish on it. And now that has a high gloss. So the, in the end, they look the same. It's just that before the gloss is on, this is flat, um, which makes it way easier to photograph, which is a huge bonus with, when you're working with blacks. Um, let's see. Uh, Miss Fairywood said, have you ever heard about Milan Art Institute? They came up in my YouTube feed and I'm wondering how one should take their content. Hold on. I don't remember. Milan Art in Institute. A lot of places call themselves art institutes without really being... Um, No, I don't think I'm familiar with this one. Looks like they've got a lot of content, which is cool. Looks like they're doing really well. Yeah, no, I don't know anything about them. I'll have to check it out. I'm impressed with the amount of content. Their thumbnails look good. I mean, I don't know how accurate it is. It looks like they've got a lot of different people talking. And so you've got to figure out, do you personally trust those artists? Look at the art, I don't know. Always, whenever you're taking advice from an artist, look at their work. 
if their work is not something that you personally want yours to look like, maybe their advice is not what you necessarily want to be taking. Funny, that reminds me, a guy wrote a little post over on a beginner art group t saying how beginners really shouldn't be giving so much advice to other people, which in some ways, yeah, I agree. He was saying, you know, I've been painting for 65 years and, and you really need to look at that artist's work. If they're not sharing their work, then they probably don't, there isn't much value in their advice because they don't know what they're talking about, blah, 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 blah. True. So I went and looked at his work, N never posted in the group, anything but giving little weirdo AI type, like I think he just typed it or looked it up on an AI advice, but I looked up his work. He's terrible. I don't know how he's been painting for 65 years. Like it is, he looks like a beginner beginner. And it's funny because you have people like that that present themselves as experts, but look at their work. Now I don't mean like tonight, this is a more beginner style painting. It's not going to be my best of my best work, but you look at my best of my best work and that speaks for itself. And that's something that you really want to look at when you're looking for artists that you want to take advice from. Are they painting, painting, you know, paint, what is it, sip and paint style, um, painting with a twist style paintings? I'm not going to take their advice. Um, those are fun classes, fun to do, but I'm also not going to take their advice on art because they're essentially a craft teacher, not really a fine art teacher, if that makes sense. So if all they do is teach beginner stuff and like this guy was trying to tell the other beginners they shouldn't give advice and I'm looking at his work going, you've been painting 65 years and you're still a beginner. So take your own advice here, but it's look at their work. Definitely look at their work and decide. So like with that account, it looks like they've got a ton of different artists giving advice. I would just look up the individual artists and see if they are worthy of listening to because they might be, it might be an amazing channel. I really don't know. I I'm impressed with how much content they have. So that's cool. But yeah, that's the extent of my knowledge there. I don't know. Uh, Marley's Avenues, Avenue, Avenues, fine. I'm not pronouncing it right. Fine art. Liquidex heavy body. What is their usual consistency? Um, cement thick. Uh, I once got myself a tube of white and the paint was so weirdly rubbery that I couldn't work with them. Just a bad tube. Are they like that? They're thick. Yours might've been more dried out than it should have been, but they are, it is a very thick paint, but it's all, it's, I'm going to lean towards if yours was rubbery, that it was starting to dry and go bad. I would have probably returned that, but they are a thick, they're a lot thicker than the Liquitex Basics. That's for sure. But rubbery, they shouldn't be. Um, Jason said, with a longer brush, is it easier to use the tip to create detail that you are going for? No, I mean, I'm, with a longer brush, I'm gonna hold my hand, uh, wrong camera. Um, I'm gonna hold my hand closer, but I'm not just using the tip, I'm actually, you know, pushing, and the whole area is going to be touching the canvas, not just the tip. The tip is not going to hold that much paint. The paint is going to be feeding through here. I'm going to push a little, well, the harder you push, the thicker the line is going to be, but I'm going to be using more of that brush. Dep I, it depends on the type of brush stroke I'm get going with though. Um, Brittany said, your koi fish looks so realistic. Thank you. Wait till you see one that I put a lot of time into. I have plans for that for some surreal stuff. Uh, Jason said, I just got a set of water soluble pencils from Faber Castell and it's HB down to 6B. If I use the HB to draw and put water color over, put watercolor over the underdrawing and it will be okay. I know you're trying to communicate with me here, but I feel like none of these words are in the right order. If I use the HB to draw and put watercolor over the underdrawing and it will be okay. Not, is it not any better? I think you're asking if you can use the HB. Yes, you can, but when you start blending with water, even the HB, all of those, it will slightly blend in with the colors you're using. So just plan on that. I wouldn't put a real heavy HB line where I plan to blend yellow watercolor because that gray is gonna mix right into it. Um, don't push hard for sure. Um, I think that's what where we're going with that. Um, Brittany Daniel said, the best stylus for the iPads are the Apple Pencil first generation or the Apple Pencil second generation, depending on the type of iPad you currently own. Uh, Python said, I loved your podcast episode with Lindsay. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, I was on, if you look at the Frugal Crafter, when, um, Lindsay, she had me as a guest there, so that was tons of fun. I love Lindsay. Um, let's see. Raven D's Pet and Wildlife Art said, uh, let's see. Adult art and stuff is the only reason why I use GoDaddy, but honestly, I'm not a fan of them. I also had to manually renew because auto renew didn't work or else the domain is over $900. Yeah, they are just, hmm. 
they will screw you over hard. Um, I'm not going to keep running with that line of thought. Deborah said, does it really matter to paint on an easel or laying down flat? Completely up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. I work, I have to do everything at an easel because of my back and my neck. So there's no way for me to look down for any length of time. My back is killing me from looking down doing all the gallery glass. Also, I plan to do a gallery glass uh, live stream sometime in the future. It probably won't be start to finish project, but we'll, I'll, I'll do maybe a two-parter. So one week we'll do the liquid lead in one week. Um, yeah, we'll be doing that coming up soon. But anyway, point is normally the easel is just easier on my back. I also find it easier to get lighting that I want. When you're flat on a table, it's harder because most of the light is gonna give you more glare. So that can be a little bit of a challenge. But when my back wasn't an issue, I liked painting flat personally more than I liked at the easel. Now I'm so used to it, it doesn't bother me, but I, had, I always preferred painting flat myself. Uh, let's see. Noctis Gamma said, I found old canvas panels of mine that have some paint marks, charcoal smudges that won't erase on the, the backs. I'd like to use them for new art. Would it be okay to sell them with the backs like that? I don't see why not. Shouldn't matter. And what's, okay, so what you can do too is, I don't think I have any in here. Do I have, oh wait, I do, hold on. So this is a, Oh, my back is not happy about how I was sitting out. Um, this is a canvas board. This one is a Fredericks. Oh, look, this is one I did upside down too. The writing was different. This was an old linen one. But you frame it in open frame. Now, I don't have anything on the back, but if I wanted to get fancy and frame this properly, you use what is like butcher paper, and they sell this at the art supply stores, and you tape. So you put double-sided tape, and you would tape the back and cover that completely. So if the back of your canvas is a hot mess and it looks a little bit trashy, you know, not quite as elevated or as elegant as the look you're going for, you would get, um, I should do a lesson with that one of these days. I, this is not how you really should frame. I did such a half-baked job on here because it's mine and I'm not sharing it, but um, I'm just showing you the back so you can see what I'm talking about. But you would, you could double-sided tape that butcher paper, put that over, and they do, the frames will, framers will cut a little corner out so that air gets back there because they say that the canvas should be able to breathe. Breathe, not breed. Oh, it would be nice if canvas spread, huh? But um, that would save some money. But yeah, that's how you would frame that and you can cover that so that the buyer never sees whatever you had on the back. So let me put that back. Oh, my back is angry every time I stand up. Okay, I've sat here for too long. Um, Raven said, I'm sorry, I know this account is more of a mouthful to say. I'm just gonna call you Raven. Um, mouthful to say than my other YouTube account. I won't be offended if you don't read my YouTube name all the, the way. Good, because I decided not to. That works out good for both of us. Um, Art by Envy said, I just got here and want to give the pups love. Oh, they're gonna like that. They're, look, they're out too. Do you boys want a super chat? Thank you so much. Oh, treats. It is a good thing I ordered you other treats. These are gonna be gone tonight. Yeah, those are very tasty, huh? Thank you so much. Okay, go, no, don't give me sad cow eyes. Go lay down, go lay down. He gives the best puppy face, like just the saddest eyes. Go lay down. The way his face is just constructed, the whites at the underside will show more. So he's really good at the sad cow face. Go boys. Um, let's see. Um, Python said, I've noticed that people who give advice rarely show their own work. Instant no, exactly. I mean, if I can't find what their work looks like, like, that, that, that speaks volumes to me. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said, let's see the front of that painting again. The background was beautifully glazed. Which paint? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know which one it was. The apple? I think they're there. I'm not getting, my back said no. I'll have to show you another day. That lesson is up here. It's an uh, intro to oil painting. I've got it. You can see the, the thing there. Um, so you can absolutely um, paint that yourself. It's a beginner lesson. You can follow along. Um, I know the full lesson is over on, on Patreon, so you guys have the full lesson there, but there is the like time-lapse version here on YouTube as well. 
Um, let's see. Oh, for the apple, you do want, uh, we've got time, fine, fine. But I need you guys to leave questions because we've got 15 minutes and I have ran out of things to ramble about. So let me grab that again. So here is that apple. I like this one. It just has such a, like, I don't know. I love the darkness of it. So this is one of those, I don't think I ever tried to sell this. Um, maybe I did, I don't know. It just, it's pretty. It, it's so subtle and it's so easy to do. Trust me, you guys can all paint this yourself. The lesson is here on YouTube and the long one over on Patreon. Now, I love the gold too. I'm on this golden teal kick lately. So I'm trying to think, what else do I have to share about this studio? I've got to come up with one of the things that I have not found yet is um, this table thing I have. Oh, I don't want to mess with that camera here. We'll mess with this one. Uh, which camera? This one. Um, I've got this thing that is just this hot mess and it is, there's my elbow. It is just ugly and I need to figure out a way to, um, I need something that's less of an eyesore. I found a solution for my carts. These are gonna get used for something else. I have two that are normally out, but those are a bit of an eyesore as well. So I've got a cabinet that is supposed to be here on the 20th. It, it was like a three week wait, which is weird for Amazon, that will go there that's going to hold a lot of stuff. But I've gotta find something for this eyesore. Like I need something to hold my palette, but also storage that isn't horribly expensive because it's gonna end up covered in paint. So I don't want like nice furniture plus who's got the money for nice furniture anymore. Um, I don't do used furniture or, which sucks because I used to love going to thrift stores and refinishing stuff. That's what I would do if it weren't for the bed bug issue. Yeah, I can't afford to treat for bed bugs. So I don't do anything used or marketplace at all ever. Um, Matt worked for Terminex for a while. That'll put the fear of bed bugs into you. Oh my gosh, like it is such a problem. Um, and if that, once that gets in your house to treat your house properly, back like, when was he working there? 2012 or so, it was $4,000 to treat a whole home. So it's gonna be even more now because we know how inflation has been lately. And you have to get all your pets out of the, my aquariums. Screwed, can't do it. I can't treat my house because of my aquariums alone. The plants, the, the acrylic paintings have to be removed like because the, they'll melt in the heat. It's, yeah, it's an issue. So yeah, unfortunately used furniture, not an option. I have to go with new. And even then it's like, I'm not gonna do quality because it's just gonna get covered in paint, but yeah, I've gotta find something for that. Um, let's see. Our Bambi said, if you haven't answered this yet, how are the stained glass windows coming along? So good. Um, actually, how can I get the image over here? Do I have it? Hold on. Let me see if I can pull up. Um, I had the daylight one. It's logging in. Give me one second. Oh, I have a message. I've missed apparently. Um, where did I post? Under general? How far back do I have to go? I don't know what I posted it under though. So maybe I can't find it easily this way. You know, I'll email it to myself. Hold on. I'm going to waste way too much time trying to do that when I can simply email it to me. Attach photo. Oh, here comes the sneeze again. So this is daylight and it's, I don't like how it looks as much in the day at all. It definitely looks better um, at night like so much nicer at night. This is more bright. They're gonna fade a lot though too. Um, oh, that's way brighter than it ever really looks, but it'll give you an idea. Uh, let's see, windows. Hold on, let me shrink that. So they are not that bright at all, pretty much ever, but that is what they look like so far. I'm so excited about how that is coming out for sure. And at night, oh, it's so much pretty. Why don't I just take a photo for you guys? I just did it. Why don't I take a photo and show you? 
Um, it, my studio, oh, maybe I can't get a good photo in here. My studio is an absolute hot mess right now because everything's in progress over here. But let me see if I can kind of, let me send that to myself really quick. Um, images, camera. Okay, let me get the other one. Um, it, and at night is when I really see it the most, so I'm really excited about this. Oh, this is a horrible photo, but whatever. I have no shame. I'll show you anyway. Oh God, the lighting is bad. Um, Wow, the lighting, that is not what it looks like at all. Whatever, that is as close as I can share with you right now. Um, so yeah, that is not very accurate at all either. Um, the real, the, my camera decided to try to make it look like daylight. I didn't realize it was doing that. But yeah, they're, um, wow, that looks terrible. They look really pretty in person. So those are what I, I'm currently at. Um, I still need to get a UV, uh, thing to put on the back of these because I'm fairly certain they're gonna fade like crazy being in South facing, facing Texas windows. Yeah, they are not gonna hold their color. But at the same time, I kind of want them to fade a little bit because you saw the daylight one. They're really bold in the colors and when they're a little bit more muted, like when I was working on them and I had just the lines and I had not filled it in yet, it was just clear. It was still really pretty. So I'm not gonna hate these when they lose some of the color. So I'm not even upset about that. But yeah, I need to put some kind of a UV blocker on the back to help preserve at least some of it because I'm pretty sure those will fade within a couple months. Um, South facing Texas window is gonna be harsh. Uh, let's see. Python said, could you do a pH test sometime on pastel matte and also Canson XL sanded paper? I don't even own sanded paper from Can or whatever the Canson is. Um, I want to know if they're good or if they pulled a UR. You can do it. Um, I mean, yeah, it'd be great, but I'd have to actually buy. I could do pastel matte. I don't, I'd have to get a new marker, but I don't have the Canson sanded paper. I only use the one. Um, theirs I don't think is a true sanded paper though. Um, you can buy that marker on Amazon. Look, pH marker, scrapbooking, like put in those things. You can buy your own and test your own. Um, so yeah, you could certainly find out if they pulled a UART and aren't actually archival. Uh, whoops. Um, Clark Feinhardt said, have you seen the new Maydine Tabaret that has a glass inset on the top for your palette? I did. I was tempted on that. And that one's, isn't it in like the 500, 400, $500 range, I think. So I'm currently saving it for, for my own studio, it has shelves and looks similar to that. I'm, I'm considering it, but the thing is the shelves are more open and so it's still gonna look cluttered when you've got everything on there. I'm looking for something that would enclose more, like hide all of that. I'm actually looking at kitchen islands. So that may be a way to go, um, like cheapy ones on Amazon, so not nice kitchen islands. But I did, I'm considering that, but for the price, like it's twice as much as some of the kitchen islands I'm seeing. So if I spent that much on a kitchen island, I could get that much nicer of one, but, because I'm trying, I'm not so much going for art studio look in here, although no, I guess I do have art supplies that'll be on display. Yeah, I'm trying as much as possible to enclose some of the stuff because that's one of the problems here with this one. It's, you see all of my crap. Like I wanna, I wanna be able to shove everything in it and close the doors and not have to look at all the crap everywhere, which as I look around the studio is kind of funny to say because it is bad right now. Um, but I did see that. And that, uh, that was one of the things that kind of got me started. Like, oh, I should replace this too, because that's nice, but I want nicer. Uh, Raven said, the only treatment I know of for bed bugs is setting the bed on fire. Well, kind of, yeah, it's um, heat. They put it like, it's not like tenting your house, but they heat, they put these things in and just keep pumping heat into your home for, I forget how long it has to be, but it's a long period of time. So when you've got as many aquariums as I do, oh, you're screwed. You are absolutely, like, I don't even know what you would do. You can't take down an 83 gallon saltwater reef tank. Like you can't just take it down. So you, so yeah, no, there will be no used stuff. Even it's getting to where I'm hesitant to order stuff on Etsy and stuff because nothing fabric anyway, because I don't know what's in people's homes. Like 
you could get bed bugs that way shipped to you. So I'm getting very, very paranoid because if, I mean, you could get it sitting at the movie theaters though and bring them home. So you're never gonna prevent it. But yeah, Dallas has gotten bad. Dallas, New York, and LA are horrible. Any of your bigger cities are really, really bad. Um, let's see. Clark Feinert said, I'll send you a message with what I'm talking about. I have a discount from them too. Oh, now that's even more interesting. Um, I think I know what you're talking about because I think it's the same thing I've been eyeing. It's like a kind of a cherry wood, but not quite cherry wood, but kind of like that stained. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not talking about the same thing. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Fly me and then said, will these be tutorials? The windows. So the first one is already a tutorial over on you on for Patreon. So you can go ahead and watch that now. And it's kind of your intro, but I don't, it's been so long since I taught, I used to teach gallery glass like 20 years ago. It's been so long since I taught those. Like, I don't remember what questions regularly came up from students. So let me know if you have a question. Um, so I'll answer that as best I can. But yeah, I did not record the seahorse um, because these are huge. So it, it, it really, it's paint by number is all it is. So I showed you on that on Patreon, like how to do it, but it is literally painting it, filling in paint by number. It's so easy. So yeah, it's already there. Um, and I have included the, the pattern for the mushroom, the one for the seahorse I need to upload for you guys still. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Baby Panda said, gallery glass fades and some colors shift. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Anything's going to. I mean, no art should be in direct sunlight. I'm putting it in direct sunlight. So it's like, there is no way it's not gonna fade. So that's why I'm gonna put a UV block, like film to help block some of that to minimize it. And I mean, I can go over it. I can redo them, whatever. Um, but even as it fades, I'm not gonna be unhappy about it because right now I don't let, like it's a little bit too, crayon bold in the day. Um, so mute, a little bit muted would not be bad, a bad thing for me. Um, and when they're clear, they're beautiful. Like you can use uh, a frost, so it looks like frosted glass, uh, crystal clear at, and uh, frosted glass. I think there's a few others um, that, that are like white and clear and they're beautiful. So, you know, I'm not going to be unhappy if that happens. Yeah, the pH pens, I want to say they were like $12, $15, $10, $5. I don't know. They weren't that bad. I just don't have one right now. Uh, Fly Meeting Moon said, isn't there a finish to stop the fading kind of a kind of varnish? I don't know for gallery glass. I'm not sure on that. I don't know. But I can put, like, you can get UV film to put on, uh, or protecting film to put on windows, and that will help block some of the UV coming through. So that will, that will certainly help. But I mean, anything. You put it in, in south-facing Texas sun, there's nothing that's really going to completely protect that. I mean, God, I had a towel from, I washed, I gave the dogs a bath, and I had a teal towel sitting on, out there for a couple of weeks. It was out on my table. I just left it there. Oh my gosh, the bleach. It looks like you dump bleach on this thing just from a couple weeks since like our sun. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Oops, that just jumped. Art by MC, uh, MD said, MB, sorry. New fear unlocked. I will never buy used furniture again. Oh no, I don't. I see um, home decor, de decorating. There's a, a girl, a blonde girl, that does home decor and design like tips and stuff and, and how to do it on a budget. But she's always telling people, oh yeah, go to the thrift store, look on Marketplace. I'm like, that doesn't save you money when you're having to treat your home for bed bugs. Heck no. And it sucks because I used to love getting old used furniture and sanding it. Like you could get quality stuff, sand it down, repaint it, restain it, whatever you want to do. Not anymore. I would not even, not even remotely risk it. And I won't buy anything that's been returned either. So like something, any clothes I get instantly go into the washing machine when I get home. Um, because you never know what someone took home and then returned. But like used any, anything that used furniture, secondhand, anything rented, anything like, oh my God. Or roaches are a big one. You get German roaches, you are screwed as bad as what uh, GoDaddy does to people. Um, let's see. Python said, is, is it archival to lock in graphite sketch on canvas with SpectraFix before going on top with oils? I mean, you're covering it. You're not going to see it. 
I don't, I actually intentionally, so some people use hairspray or different things to seal it down and then they paint over it and it's generally fine. No, normally not to see, you're not sealing it. So that's why I say hairspray in that case. I don't seal it with anything. Um, when I want my graphite lines to be worked out and when you, that's one of the nice things with oil paint. I can draw with graphite line, go over it with oils and I will lose those lines. I want to lose those lines. Those are just there for a guideline in the beginning. I don't want to see graphite lines through my translucent layers of oils. So I never ever put anything to seal my graphite down. I don't need it. Like I want, I want those worked out. So, um, yeah. Uh, Flamey even said, add gallery glass to your agendas. Yes, I, and I'll do some smaller projects that are better tutorials. And these are so large that it doesn't make for the best like follow along tutorial because no one should start something that big, but it's what I was working on. So it's what I posted. Um, Dolphin Soul said, would you do a style of that? Would you do that style of seahorse in the window look on a live lesson in ink, like in ink tents? I certainly could. That would actually be fun. I'll plan on that. Yes, I will add that. You remind me in the future, maybe for next week. Uh, oh, by the way, it's Dolphin Soul's birthday, so everyone should tell her happy birthday. I hear she's, what did you say you were, 92? I think she's 92. Um, let's see. Okay, we are at 10.02. We are done. My back is very happy that we are done. Oh, I'm kind of scared to stand up, though. That's going to be uncomfortable. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining. Make sure to check out our moderator's channels. Links are in the video description. Joseph has live streaming Clark Fine Art. Both of those guys have live streaming all the time. Uh, Nick occasionally uploads something if we can convince him to edit. He hates editing a lot. So, but awesome videos when he does. Check them out. Links are in the description. Probably next week, Seahorse a stylized seahorse, I should say, in ink tents, so that'll be fun. And I will see you guys next week. I'm forgetting something. There is something I'm supposed to tell you, and I don't know what it is. Whatever. I'll see you next week. Yeah.